Hello, my name is David Gushaw, Clinical Coordinator for Redlands Community College. We're going to talk about clinical instructor and preceptor training. The objectives for this course are to understand the requirements for clinical instructors. We're going to define what a clinical instructor is. We're going to define what a clinical preceptor is. We're going to describe the different characteristics and responsibilities of the clinical instructors, be able to differentiate the domains of learning and give an example of each, be able to identify some tips of the trade of being a clinical instructor or preceptor, discuss the duties and responsibilities of the hospital staff, understand the clinical paperwork and what is expected when filling out that paperwork. I'm going to explain how I obtain uh, clinical rotations and we're going to understand what the clinical hub is and what it's used for. To become a clinical instructor you need to be nationally registered and state certified at the level that you are precepting. You need to have a minimum of one year of experience. You'll also need your CPR card ACLS certification and PALS or PEP certification. You will also need some teaching experience. We also need your shot records. This can be titers or proof of immunizations. They are MMR. You need to have two before the age of 18 or one after the age of 18. The HEP B, it's a three-part series or you may sign the declination form. Varicella or the chicken pox, this has to be a titer or proof of having the vaccine. You need to have two TB tests done in one calendar year. You also need the flu shot. The hospitals are now requiring the flu shot. If you're allergic to it, they're requiring you to pro provide a doctor's note stating that you are allergic to it. If you're unable to take the vaccine, you will be required to wear a mask in patient contact areas. You will also need training in HIPAA, bloodborne pathogens, hazardous communications, and you'll also need to have a national and state background check. The national we go through group one and the state OSBI. Clinical instructors versus clinical preceptors. Clinical instructors are school representatives that accompany the students to the clinical site. They are there to assist the education of the students and to be an administrator for the school if any issues arise. Clinical preceptors are facility representatives and these people are the, who the students follow throughout the clinical rotation. So that's the difference between clinical instructors and clinical preceptors. Some of the characteristics and responsibilities of being a preceptor is that you're functioning as a preceptor for Redlands Community College during the in-hospital clinical rotations. You need to ensure that the students receive quality clinical education and are provided with every possible learning opportunity. You need to exhibit appropriate professional attire and behavior Participate in the clinical adjunct orientation. You need to maintain professional, positive relationships with the clinical facility employees. Provide a safe learning environment for the students, staff, and patients. You will need to meet with the charge nurse in each area where the students will be assigned and discuss the clinical objectives 
and expectations. Follow all course clinical guidelines and expectations as outlined in course and clinical syllabus. You need to arrive at the clinical site about 15 minutes early from the scheduled time. This is to meet with the students to get them signed in and to talk about some clinical objectives, some goals, and some expectations that you have of the student. The student needs to also discuss some expectations that they have of you for the clinical. Accompany the students to their clinical area and introduce them to the charge nurse and preceptor. You need to discuss the, with the charge nurse the clinical objectives, what the students can and cannot do during their clinical rotation. Be present on the unit at all times where staff and students can interact with you. This is just to answer any questions that the students might have or the staff might have of you or of paramedicine in general. Provide ongoing and appropriate on-site clinical instruction and discussion for each clinical experience to include appropriate effective behavior, proper skill techniques, pathophys, laboratory findings, expected signs and symptoms, patient management, and med medication and medication administration. Go to lunch with the students, go as a group, and talk about their patients um, at the beginning of the day. Go over the goals to see if they're reaching their goals. Well, discuss any questions that they might have of a patient or a skill. And then go back to the clinical site. Meet with the students upon completion of the clinical and discuss and complete the effective evaluation form of each student. Talk about their patients. Did they reach their goals? Did they reach their expectations? Complete all the students paperwork on that day and to provide immediate feedback. Document observations of the student's skills and behaviors. You're going to complete the clinical evaluation documents at the end of the clinical and return it to the lead instructor and or the clinical coordinator. You need to maintain professional relationships with the clinical staff and at each site. You're going to act as a liaison between the clinical staff, the students, the paramedic instructors and the clinical coordinator. You need to document and notify the clinical coordinator or program director of any problems, student tardies, or student absences that might occur. And you also need to be in direct contact with the instructors, the clinical coordinator, or the program director when any issue arise. We might also pull you in to assist in auditing the PCRs and help with remedial training when necessary. The preceptor should have the following characteristics. You need to be fair, patient, consistent, approachable, self-directed, organized. You need to know how to adapt. You need to be a role model, be very objective, and be tactful with what you say, uh, specifically when you're talking about criticisms. The preceptor also needs to be able to communicate appropriately, observe objectively, 
facilitate educational opportunities, and show enthusiasm. Going from the hospital clinicals to ambulance clinicals, it's still pretty much the same thing. The biggest thing is you need to orient the student of where the supplies are on the trucks. Having them know exactly where everything is will help you uh, and your partner better care for the patients. But meet them at the start of the shift. Go over any clinical objectives and expectations that you have. Learn exactly what they need to get from out of this clinical. Their expectations out of you, etc. Now let's talk about the domains of learning. A psychologist by the name of Benjamin Bloom in 1956 identified three domains of learning. The first one has to do with cognitive. This is where the learner exhibits memory of previously learned materials by recalling facts, terms, basic concepts, and answers. The effective domain, which is the way people react emotionally and their ability to feel another living thing's pain or joy. Effective objectives typically target the awareness and growth in attitudes, emotion, and feelings. And the final domain is psychomotor. The ability to physically manipulate a tool or an instrument like a hand or a hammer. Psychomotor objectives usually focus on change and or development in behavior and or skills. All of our objectives that have been written throughout this course, throughout the paramedic school uh, course, go off these domains of learning. Almost all of the Objectives are mostly psychomotor and cognitive. They're all different types of students. These are just a few of them. The apathetic student. The student shows little to no emotion. They show little to no interest or concern. They don't really act like they want to be there. Kind of have a conversation with these students to figure out if this is even the right profession for them. The know-it-all student, they're typically the been there, done that, or I've ran that call before student. Kind of encourage the student to open their mind up to different ways to do the same thing. The non-participating student, you know, Attempt to get them up to try new things, to get them out of their own element because that's the way they feel okay with everything. The over enthusiastic student, tell them that you, you really appreciate their willingness to be excited, but explain to the student that there are times that being overly enthusiastic will actually hurt rather than help. You guys need to keep an open mind. Uh, remember that there's more than one way to reach the ending goal. There's more than one way to start an IV. Um, but remember that the students are still in the learning process and it's your job to guide them for them to reach their goals. If the student has a different style of patient care, ask yourself these questions. Is it safe? Does it meet the standard of care? Would the medical director approve the style? Does it cause any harm in any way? 
is it offensive in any way? As long as you guys can answer these questions appropriately, then look at the what, what they're doing and see if it's okay for them to actually do it. If you can remember how overwhelming everything is or was when you were a student, I think you'll be better able to understand your student and where they're coming from. Listen to what the student wants to learn and don't always present only the material that you want to teach. Take the time to explain to the student the expectations that you have of the students and learn what the student expects from you. This actually decreases the anxiety and helps both parties know what to expect from one another. Remember, not every student learns the same way. So you might have to tailor the way you educate students on a subject differently. Get to know your students' strengths and weaknesses as soon as you can. This will help him or her find ways to address any weaknesses. As educators, we should all learn from everything you come in con into contact with. Learn from your students' experiences and skills. Be patient and understanding. They might not be able to remember everything that you or their instructors have taught them, but you need to have reasonable expectations. Give the students some independence. Have them seek out their own learning opportunities. But make sure you're there to assist in facilitating opportunities for them to learn from. Don't rush teaching. Everyone learns at a different pace. Communication is vital for educating the student. Be open, honest with that student. Use constructive criticism. Even if the student has a good grasp on what's going on, nobody's perfect. Everyone needs to work on something. Encourage the student to either ask questions or ask for advice or just to talk to you if they're unsure about an assessment, a medication, an IV skill, or skills in general. And as long as the student does not jeopardize safety, let the student make the mistakes. This is an excellent way for them to learn, and it actually has a more of an impact on the student. Like I said, encourage the student to ask questions. There really aren't any stupid questions. Do not ne neglect to take about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the day uh, just to review what was learned, answer any questions, and to set goals for the next shift. When teaching, go step by step. Uh, new people and particularly students cannot be taught shortcuts. They first need to learn the way to do things the long way. Build on previ previously gained knowledge and create a non-threatening environment uh, because the students stressed out enough. Do not wait to drop the bomb regarding problem areas at the evaluation time. You should always discuss the positive and negative points after each call if on an ambulance or during breaks at, in a hospital setting. You need to set clear goals in both directions. Be open and available for the students to talk with you after each call is ended or after they get an interesting patient in the ER or wherever their clinical setting is. And have fun. 
Laughter can be included in any learning environment. It actually can help ease the tension as well. So, what do you think the hospital staff thinks of us? Oh, put yourself in their shoes. What did you think about when you first found out that you had a student? Some of the hospital staff love to have students, some do not. And as clinical instructors, you need to figure out the atmosphere and make the students' time an educational one. A lot of times, they just don't know what we do. Some think that we are just ambulance drivers. You need to assist in building the relationship between the two professions. And a lot of times it just takes a little bit of re-education re to the staff to what we actually do. It's a learning experience for them as well. If any issues arise, the line of communication begins with the student to the clinical instructor. If you cannot fix the issue or smooth things over, then you need to contact the clinical coordinator the instructor and or the program director. The clinical paperwork. You need to fill it out completely. Complete the paperwork on that day. Be honest. And remember nobody's perfect. This is the main clinical evaluation form. This form is required for the students to have for every single clinical that they perform. Uh, this can be, the top part can be filled out by either the student or the clinical instructor or preceptor. Um, please make sure that the date format is month, day, year, um, student name, the shift time needs to have um, the beginning of the shift time and the end of the shift time. Uh, the site is a drop down menu that uh, the student can go in and say they do an ICU clinical, they click the ICU, they click out of it, and it'll stay right there. The preceptor name is, um, it can, again, it could be either the clinical instructor or, or clinical preceptor. Uh, there is a grading scale of one to five, uh, five being very good, um, the one being unacceptable. Uh, the definitions, uh, you know, you can read right here. Uh, the biggest one that most people, most students will get is a three, which is acceptable for their experience level or um, experience knowledge. Um, there are several different effective aptitude evaluation uh, characteristics. Um, please go through and grade them appropriately. Um, again, this is a drop down menu. So you can either put five or you know three or one um, if they're unacceptable. Um, there's also comments here that you can uh, add to um, or use it for constructive criticisms um, if you like. Uh, there's to go through the characteristics, there's professional, professionalism and attitude, learner's characteristics, communication skills, medical knowledge, psychomotor skills, and records and report writing. <clears throat> this right here is for team leader evaluations. They only do this for EMS internship um, and or uh, physician internship. Um, if they're not in any type of that, then you can leave these blank. Preceptor comments, just type in what you thought about the student during the shift, um, add anything to them um, that you couldn't add in the, the spaces up above. Uh, print, your, print your name in there, um, go ahead and sign the evaluation sheet. 
have the student place their email in here and then press submit. Once you pr press submit, all the information that you, that you put in here will be sent to a database so we could actually have it. This is the professional behavior evaluation form. This is only to be filled out by the clinical instructor at the hospital site. Um, start by filling out the student's name, date uh, of the evaluation. Again, follow the month, day, year format. The clinical site is a drop down menu like the other one. Um, student email. Um, have the student fill out their email. And again, it's the same type of grading scale of five being very good, one being unacceptable. Again, most of the people or students will uh, stay in the acceptable for uh, experience range. <clears throat> it's a one to five scale. These are drop down menus you go and you pick what you feel the student deserves. Um, on all these diff different characteristics. Um, there's a space provided if you want to make comments. Uh, please put in any constructive criticisms or things that the students can do better um, or if, if they perform very well, go ahead and put that on there. Um, sign the document, print your name, have the student sign and actually press submit. Uh, submit just sends all the information that you put in here to the uh, a database so we can keep track of it. This is the daily performance sheet that the students will fill out after every clinical. This is to have them keep track of how many patients they, were, they saw, what procedures they performed, um, observed, and keeps track of how many competencies that they had on a, the said clinical. Uh, <clears throat> the students will fill this out. You will have to sign some at, during some places on here. So uh, have the students fill out their name, the date in the month, day, year format. Have their email filled out. This is where your name goes. Clinical sites where they pr perform the clinical at, how many patients they saw during the shift, have the students type out the procedures that they performed and observed, um, any comments or suggestions by you, um, the time uh, you need to fill out the time that the student got to the clinical and what time they left, um, you also need to sign for that. The students will fill out you know, what level of training they are, and this goes by their competencies. They need to fill out how many um, skills or patients they came in contact with. Um, so say they um, gain five IV access, so they click five. Um, and etc. down here. Uh, the preceptor will put their name in the box and actually sign it and then submit it. This is the clinical evaluation form that the students will fill out on the instructor and or preceptor. If you're at the hospital, the student needs to fill out two of these, one for you as the instructor and the preceptor that they're actually following. Now I'm going to talk about how we obtain our cl clinical slots for EMS rotations and hospital-based clinical rotations. Almost all of these schools associate with the EMS agencies through FISDAP. The EMS agencies will place the available shifts that they have on the scheduling page on FISDAP, and it's pretty much a first come, first serve 
basis to get the available slots. Hospital clinicals are done through groups. Oklahoma City, they have a group called NESA, or the Nursing Educators and Service Administrators. And in Tulsa, they have a group called the Tulsa Area Deans and Directors for Nursing and Nurse Education. What mainly goes on at these meetings are negotiations between who's going to get what slot, etc. Basically, you have a representative from a school and a representative from a hospital. They get together and they determine how many slots are, the, are available at one time in a different setting as an ER, ICU, dialysis, etc. And then they also make policies and procedures of what hospital, hospitals need as far as shot records or the different type of training, etc. Both Oklahoma City and Tulsa actually have gone to this website and it's www.theclinicalhub.net this is where the hospital does all their scheduling they keep track of attendance you'll actually have a username and password to get into this site so that you might keep track of the attendance the username will be your first initial and your last name and the password will be your last name and a four digit number. Basically what all you guys are going to do is keep track of attendance. This is the front of the home page. You go to the, the clinicalhub.net. This actually works on any device, Droid, Apple, you go, you type in your username and your password, click login. It'll take you to this page or a page similar, similar like this. You need to go to opportunities right here and click on that. And then go right here to student attendance. Now you might not have the search opportunities or pending requests, but you will have definitely have this one, and this is the one you need to go to. <clears throat> After that, you click what day it is on that clinical, the end date, and then you press request schedule. This will pop up, and you'll see this is your request results right here. Make sure that it's the appropriate day. The start and any time are right. Some slots say 7 to 3. Some are 3 to 11. Some say 7A to 3P and 3P to 7P. So you want to make sure that you get, you check every single one that's associated with your clinical that day. You have your facility site and what unit you're on. Make sure that that's appropriate. You go and you make sure the student's there and the instructor. Then you push, you click here and here. You click check and the page will ref refresh. And you'll see two little marks here that says attendance. After that, you log out, and that's all you have to do. Again, this keeps track of attendance for the hospitals. Um, if you have any questions regarding clinical precepting, feel free to give me a call. 
my email address is gushawd at msa.net and my number is area code 405-274-3746.